So yes, there is an app for that. So today's workshop was canceled because Megan is homesick, but I thought I would share what you would have missed if you uh, had come today and if Megan was here. So this is my Android phone. I have some folders here. This is my folder with all of the apps that I use for teaching and learning. Obviously we've already talked about the Canvas app so you should already be familiar with that and how to log into that app. But there are some others that we can use as well. For instance, if you are into blogging, you can set it up so that your school Gmail account is connected to your own personal blog, Blogger. And what you can do is take pictures and write drafts and so forth. So if I'm having a class, I can write a journal post. This is where my content would go in my content goes here. So there's my blog post. I can even bold some words if I needed to. If I can get rid of that. Oops. Go away. Alright, we'll forget that idea. So we're done. Alright, so I have my title, my content, and if I'm using tags, it's just a practice. Alright, so I have my tags. If I wanted to put in my location so that people can see where I am, which is kind of scary, I could do that. And then also if I wanted to take a picture. So let's take a quick picture. Alright, got a picture here. Oops, gotta get you back in the screen. Alright, so I took a picture of my desktop and now I have a picture that's going to go in. And what I would simply do is save it. And when I save it, I have a draft, but I can also publish it as well. So you can see there that that's a draft, but to publish it, I would just go ahead and hit the send button. And now it's publishing it. And all my publishing posts are here. So it's pretty cool. So you can set up your blog. You can actually view your blog from here as well. I'm signing in to my blog and there it is and there's my latest post right here so there's not much to see other than the type text that I typed in and my picture that I added in the title alright so that's one um, I think we've already talked about some others in previous sessions but one of my favorite is if you're listening to some music let's see what we got going on here alright I don't know if you can hear that but I got a little dirt road playing and let's say that I'm in a room and I'm hearing this song and I want to ID that, ID that song. So I can open up SoundHound and it starts listening. And it's receiving the information and there it is. It names that song for you. What I really like about it too is right here in the middle it gives you the lyrics so you can sing along like it's karaoke way we raise in our southern days way we, oh, that's too fast for me I'm not a rapper okay so that's fun alright something else that you can do I love keeping track of my feeds so when I am sitting around doing nothing I can go in and read maybe my ENH 114 blogs from my students so I have them all saved in my feed reader and then I can click through and read those Oop, I've read them all already but here you can see all of my student blogs. So anyone that I want to visit, they're all together in one place. That's really cool. So that's Feed Reader or Feedly. Um, also, if you like to um, save articles when you're reading, well, Pocket integrates with your phone. And anytime you're on any app, whether it be a web page or in Feedly, you can save things to Pocket and then Pocket will organize all of those different articles for you. So it works really well. So if I show you how it works, I'll go back into Feedly. And let's say I'm reading an article. Of course, not my student blog. I'm into Android. So let's say I'm reading this article and I decide I want to read this later because I don't have time to read it all right now. I hit my Pocket icon and it's saved to Pocket. Did you see that? That was really quick. Saved to Pocket. That's cool. So then later, I can go into Pocket and those articles are there. 
So there's that last article that I just saved right there, Lollipop on LG G3. So I can read it, I can tag it, and then I can also share it with others. So if I decide, hmm, I think I'm going to send this to someone, or I can post it to Google+, Plus, but I'm just going to send it to a friend. I could send it using that link, but I like to go ahead and use my Gmail. And then it opens up and goes right into my Gmail, and I can type in the name of the person. Let's send this to Chris. I can choose Chris Nielsen and send it right to him. All right, we won't do that. All right, back into my uh, school folder. Digo is another one, if you haven't heard of it. It's a social bookmarking app, and oops, I'm going to have to log in. Hold on there. All right, so I, I backed out of that one because I want to show you something else really quick. So um, if you're like me, you have passwords for everything. All of these things need passwords. So when I was going into Digo to log in, I don't remember that password. Well, what I can use is this program or this app, because there's an app for that, called LastPass. And LastPass will remember your passwords. So I'm going to go ahead and uh, set that up and so you can see how that works. All right, so I put in the master password and say OK. Oops, it was the wrong password. Let me try that again. All right, so then it brings up the options. So I'm trying to log into Digo. So I go ahead and put in Digo. And it will automatically put in my username and password for me. And then I can sign in, which is great because you only have to remember one password. Unfortunately for me, it's a difficult password to remember. <laughs> all right, so that's going to load up. And basically all it is is my social bookmarks from anywhere on the web where I'm saving things. So as I roll through and read things about my African American Lit class, I can save them here to Digo. And then later I can come back and look at them. And I can also uh, sync this with the web so that when I'm on the web, I can do that. And then also I can search for things. So for instance, if I'm saving a bunch of stuff on podcasting, I can search in podcasting. And all of the, the things that I've tagged for podcasting will show up. Like this one, 25 podcasting tools and resources. So when I click that, it's just going to take me to the resource that I saved here. So it's a great place to keep a collection of items that you might be wanting to use later. All right, well, here's another one. I put it in here so we can find it easily. But you all have plants, right? I have plants. But if you're like me, you have a brown thumb. Well, can you see it? It's brown. <laughs> all right, so what I can do is I can set up my garden manager, and I can keep track of my plants. Wow, this is so unfortunate. My plants are gone. Oh, well, I just got a new phone. So I think my plants are going to die now because it's not going to remind me to water them. But that's what the garden manager does. It sets off an alarm, reminds you to water your plants. It's awesome. All right, what else? OK, last one. Speaking of watering plants, how about reminding yourself to water your body? This is an app that will remind you every so often that you need to drink water. And it really has this obnoxious watering sound that uh, you can uh, set up to make sure that it reminds you. So when your phone goes off and it sounds like somebody is pouring water into a glass, it makes you want to drink some water. So you come in and say, oh, I just had a glass, a cup of water, eight ounces, another eight ounces, and then you're done. OK, so you have your notifications turned on and so forth. Pretty cool. All right, so that's it for There's an app for that. That's what you would have missed today other than what other everybody else would have been sharing as well. But um, maybe next time you can join us.